Our third speaker is Susan Kramer. Toastmaster since 2003, current Vice President, Public Relations of MVP Advanced, and spreader of the benefits of Toastmasters everywhere, Susan Kramer, distinguished Toastmaster, is no stranger to writing speeches. Today, she's going to share with us some of the techniques she's mastered and others she's observed over the years. Join me in welcoming Susan to share her Pekakacha entitled, Winning Words for Stunning Speeches. Susan Kramer, Winning Words for Stunning Speeches. Winning Words for Stunning Speeches, Susan Kramer. Now you can go. Yay. picture to help your audience see in their mind's eye what you're seeing in yours. Vivid word choices invoke the imagination of your audience and help draw them into your story. In the next six minutes and two seconds, I'm going to persuade you to use more winning words in your speeches. Use vivid words to write for the ear. We sometimes forget that when people listen to us speak live, they can't press rewind and listen again. We have to get it right the first time. It's okay to be less formal and more repetitive with the spoken word. Use vivid words. Use vivid words to excite the senses, like smell and taste. Close your eyes and listen. Strolling through the busy bakery, we could smell the sinfully sumptuous sweets hidden within. Okay, open your eyes. Did your mouth start to water? Writing for the senses can help pull your audience into your story. Use vivid words for colors. Ditch the old primary color standbys of red, blue, and green, and use a paint wheel to develop colors in more detail. Use violet, lilac, or indigo to describe the juicy grapes ripening on the vine. Use vivid words to invoke emotion. Tell a personal story to touch the heart of your audience. Make them feel what you felt, whether it's scared, mad, or sad. No was the hardest lesson to teach my two-year-old, glass-half-full, always-smiling daughter. It broke my heart when her baby blues brimmed with tears. To recap, use vivid words that are concrete to engage your audience's senses. Concrete words describe actual experiences, things, or events. They are specific, real, and tangible. Use concrete, vivid words to describe things that you hear, smell, taste, touch, and feel. Statistics can help add realism, emotional impact, and credibility to your speech. For example, rather than say, 33% of the population in North America, say one in three people in this room. Not only will your statistic be more memorable, but it will allow your audience to feel like they are part of it. Verb tenses set the timing in your speech. Use was or did for past tense to speak of yesterday. Use will or shall for future tense to speak of tomorrow. And use am or is for present tense to talk about right now. I did go shopping because I am hungry and I will need to eat soon. Simple isn't just a 10-point Scrabble word. It's also the approach to adopt when selecting the words to put into your speech. The simpler the language you use, the easier it is for your audience to digest your message. Watch out for complicated multisyllabic words like multisyllabic. Watch your language and keep it clean. No cussing, using the Lord's name in vain, or stating your point in an offensive manner. Even implying an unacceptable word using sounds, acronyms, or gestures can accidentally offend. And one offended audience member can do more damage to your reputation than a hundred happy ones. Watch for jargon and fashionable buzzwords. Use specialized terminology only when speaking to people who are familiar with it. If you must use jargon, take the time to explain it with words that everyone can understand. For example, 
For utilize, say use, and for operational, say working. Making small changes like using more meaningful statistics personalized to your audience, using tense wisely to set the stage for timing, and using simple, clean jargon, free words, will give your audience a better chance to enjoy your message. Remember, short words, short, par short phrases, and short paragraphs. If you were to say, I'm experiencing a roller coaster of emotions, what you'd really be saying is, you're going through a lot of emotional ups and downs right now. This is an example of a rhetorical device called a metaphor. A metaphor compares two things that are not alike, but have something in common. Similes are another rhetorical device. They compare two things using like or as to give more visual emphasis to the thing that you're, being, that you're describing. The sharp turns of the highway to climb the mountain like a snake slithering up the slope. The human-made highway is compared to a nature-born snake. Alliterations are a rhetorical device where the initial sounds in words or the stressed syllables repeat in a memorable way. Here we could say, Larry's lazy lizard loves lying like a lump. All those L sounding words aside, we also heard repetition with the Z sounds in lazy lizard. Too much fun. Use words economically. We just covered three rhetorical devices. The metaphor to compare two things, the simile to compare two things using like or as, and the alliteration with lots of similar, similar sounding sounds in a row. Sprinkle rhetorical devices throughout your speech to aid in audience understanding. Triads are a very powerful for confirming or for crafting your message. They first allow you to express concepts more completely. Secondly, they help you emphasize your points. And third, they make your message more memorable. Whether it's three points, three similar sounding words, or three adjectives, use the power of three often. A good, well-placed pause lets your audience laugh, ruminate, and recall. Let's see how it works. When was the last time that you wrote a pause into your speech? A play on words, this ohm is here as a reminder. A well-written, rehearsed, and memorized speech leaves no room for the nasty um and other unintentional filler words to creep their way into our speeches. Let's meditate on that. As with all things Toastmasters, getting good at using words takes practice. We've covered a lot of ground in the last six minutes and 30 seconds. Are you convinced yet? Using these winning word ideas will lead to stunning speeches. Try one in your next speech. Your audience will thank you for it. Woo!